guys welcome back to the channel we're going to do another spooky ghost reaction video this time we're going back to slap ham uh this video is called freaky video sparks deep concern among netizens let's hope there's some good creepy stuff that we haven't seen before Look forward to some good spooks and shocks uh if you wouldn't mind popping by slap Tam's channel and dropping them a sub be very grateful the link is in the description and if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up subbing to my channel and ringing the bell for alerts of new content going live um it'll also help draw attention to the channel and draw some views in be very grateful for the support uh we are picking things up again and after I sort of took a bit of time out had a bit of a dip we're just trying to get back in full swing get things moving I'm very grateful for you all for sticking by and watching the videos and let's get on with this let's get the cans on and give it a watch How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Boy, we've got an action-packed episode full of some seriously spooky content. So hit that subscribe button and get ready for more creepy stuff. Just like this. Our first eerie clip of the day, uploaded to TikTok by user Nayla Zayafrina Zianisa, is some CCTV footage. Easy for him to see. Which captured in Indonesia. It's nearly 1am on the 19th of August 2024 when this resident is notified of movement just outside their home. They quickly look at the feed, but can't quite believe what they're seeing. Okay. The bike appears to be moving all on its own. That's some arrow graphic, that man. It's very reminiscent of that one on the rooftop a few weeks back we had with a little spooky trike moving around on its own. It's late at night and there's no one else around. Mm, nearly 1am. To this day, the family has no way of explaining this bizarre movement. That is pretty creepy. Could just be strings, but pretty worried nonetheless. It, if it was a ghost, that's, that's what keeps happening to us. In a recent investigation, the team from what the ghost that? hunting YouTube channel Ghost Hunty TV took their viewers deep into the heart of an old abbey in Canyon City, Colorado, rumored to be a hotspot for paranormal activity. The Holy Cross Abbey has a long, rich history stretching back nearly a century. And with it, tales of haunting spirits have lingered for years. The Abbey was originally founded in 1923 when Benedictine monks, led by Father Bradley, brought the land from a wealthy local businessman with plans of a grand monastery. However, due to the economic strain of the Great Depression and Father Bradley's financial troubles, the initial lavish vision of the Abbey was scaled back. In 1998, the Abbey was de-sanctified and sold to private investors. And since then, reports of strange occurrences have increased, drawing paranormal investigators eager to uncover its secrets. That's a nice looking building to be fair. That looks a nice place to go. During their investigation, the Ghost Hunty team met with Dennis Batchelor, the current caretaker, who shared stories of the Abbey's haunted reputation. This is a very active location, um, and I, I honestly believe that anybody who does any investigation here never leaves disappointed. Everybody always has at least one personal um, interaction that they get to take home with them. Using a spirit board, the team begins their investigation, trying As you do. to reach out to the other side. Were you a nun? They've put some effort into it, like, fair play to them. Here. Oh, yeah. Yes. I got chills. Are you a woman of God? I do feel like no. I think that's an answer. Are you stuck here? <laughs> the team believes they contact a spirit named Nancy, who identifies herself as a former nun. Nancy hints at an even larger presence within the Abbey's walls, claiming 92 spirits reside there, including 18 nuns and nine children. How many spirits here are, like, totally, including nuns and children, everybody? Nine. nine. 
92. Yes. Yes. Later in the investigation, while exploring the old property, the team hears something quite eerie. They're like, no, thank you. What? What? It'd just be wind or something, I don't know. But perhaps the most chilling encounter occurs when in the middle of a quiet session in the main hall. Watch what happens. <laughs> I want to know. What? What the? Two. Your hair is lifted in the back right now. I've seen bright flashes of light. Are you okay? Yeah. Watching that again in slow motion, one of the team members' hair is suddenly pulled back. As Ghost Hunty TV wrapped up... The hair does seem to move, like, to be fair, as opposed to just throwing the head back. ...their investigation, viewers were left with more questions than answers. Is the Holy Cross Abbey truly haunted by the spirits of those who once lived and died... You think it would come off, though? ...within its walls? With its mysterious history and the eerie Depending on how well it's attached, I guess. ...events, the Abbey seems to hold on to its secrets, waiting for those brave enough to seek them out. I want to know... Ow. What? What the...? Two. Your hair is lifted in the back right now. I've seen bright flashes of light. Are you okay? Yeah. Pretty creepy. Hard to tell, hard to tell. I thought initially it did look like the hair sort of did move backwards, but hard to tell on the second view. What do you guys think? Nice looking place though. On September 18, 2022, CCTV footage captured a mysterious sighting above the central station in Santiago, Chile. Take a look. Bloody hell. Seems to just drop vertically and then shoot across. Well, that's weird. The video shows an unidentified object swiftly passing through the sky. Impressive. Local authorities reviewed the footage but were unable to provide a satisfactory explanation for the strange object. With no clear answers, the incident has stirred curiosity and debate, leaving many to wonder if this could be a genuine UAP sighting. That's bizarre. I don't know if it just seems convenient that it drops behind the big building, like, but I don't know, it's, it doesn't half seem to move, though. What do you guys think? I would like to look more into the UFO stuff as well, to be honest. TikTok user Sarahi Ramirez, better known as Lupus Gamers, has been documenting eerie experiences in her home, fueling her belief that the place might be haunted. Her videos have captivated viewers worldwide, showing strange events that are difficult to explain and have gone viral on the platform. In one of her first clips, Sarahi films a... That was Freaking creepy. Mysterious cat wandering through her house. ¿Quién eres? It's an unsettling sight as the family doesn't actually own a cat. Sarahi speculates that the feline may be a manifestation of a bruja, or witch, commonly believed in Latin American folklore to take the form of animals to spy or cause mischief. Te estoy grabando. ¿Quién eres? Cats do have a tendency of just doing what the hell they want to be fair. It's hard to make out that, to be honest. I thought it was a kid crawling about, to be honest. ¿Por qué estás aquí en mi casa? In another clip, the bizarre activity continues with the sound of faint meowing coming from within a closed cupboard. 
Entonces, empiezan a escuchar ruidos Escuché como un gato Como dos gatos que se estuvieron peleando dentro oh, Se escucha mucho With the strange occurrences piling up, the family decides to try a spirit summoning game called Sarita Sarita, a popular but spine-chilling ritual in Mexican and Latin American culture, where participants attempt to contact spirits by repeating Sarita Sarita to establish a line of communication. Ay, Regina. Soon, things turn super creepy. Another video shows the family playing the game once again when, without warning, this happens. Oh, no manches. Sarita, Sarita, podemos salir del juego? With each clip, Sarahi's home appears to reveal more supernatural secrets, leaving her followers wondering if a dark presence has made itself known. So is her family truly haunted by a sinister entity? Could there be another explanation? Love to hear your thoughts on this one in the comments down below. That is pretty creepy. We've seen the clip of her getting grubbed a long time ago, to be honest. I didn't realise there was more context to it than that. That's... Could well be put on for likes, but would you involve your kids in something like that? Strange. No, there's no. Sarita, Sarita, podemos salir del juego? Uy, no manches. Sarita, Sarita, podemos salir del juego? So you came from where the other woman seems to be stood. So. It's quite easy to kick that over there, like, but I don't know. Let us know what you think. In 1976, British television audiences encountered a chilling segment Excellent. on a program the program nationwide that would haunt them for decades. The broadcast, shown just once, detailed a peculiar discovery near Hadrian's Wall on the border of Scotland and England where two children found ancient stone heads. I think I remember saying these relics. a while back, to be honest. But these artifacts, innocently unearthed in Hexham, Northumberland, would soon spark tales of supernatural encounters that would echo through the years. The segment began, innocently enough, discussing Celtic history. Luke Casey, the nationwide reporter, explained how the Celts viewed the head as a powerful spiritual symbol, akin to the Christian cross. It represented all the great, deep, dark and dreadful things of man's nature. To them, the head was a sacred vessel, often severed from prisoners or revered figures and preserved as a macabre talisman. But according to Casey, these were not merely artifacts, they held dark energies. The notion aligned with the stone tape theory, a curious idea gaining traction at the time that suggests stones and other inanimate objects can somehow record powerful emotions or events, replaying them under the right circumstances. Soon after the heads were unearthed, eerie disturbances began in Hexham. Mrs. Jenny Robson, who lived in the council house where the heads were discovered, told Nationwide about a terrifying night when her neighbour was jolted awake by loud crashes and screams. In a chilling turn, her neighbour recounted seeing a strange figure, half man, half beast, lurk into her room, moving on hind legs like a werewolf before escaping down the stairs. Stricken with fear, the family was left with no rational explanation for what they had witnessed. The heads were eventually sent to Dr. Anne Ross, a leading Celtic studies expert who soon found herself entangled in the mystery. Despite her academic detachment, Ross experienced an unexplainable event just days after receiving the heads. She woke one night in a panic, feeling a bone-chilling coldness filling the room. As she looked towards the door, she saw a tall, dark figure with wolf-like features retreating from her bedroom. 
Compelled to chase it, she followed the figure down the stairs, only to lose it at the back of her home. The chilling presence affected not just Ross, but her daughter as well, who days later reported a similar encounter with a shadowy wolf-like creature that seemed to leap over the banister and vanish into thin air. Following these terrifying incidents, the heads were eventually removed from Ross's home, and with them, the eerie presence seemed to dissipate. She and her family described a sense of relief, as though a heavy shadow had been lifted. The nationwide broadcast ended by posing a haunting question to viewers. Could traumatic experiences from the past truly imprint themselves into objects, waiting to be replayed like a ghostly recording? It was a fanciful notion for the time, yet it resonated with viewers, leaving an indelible mark on British television history. The Hexham heads were eventually lost, their whereabouts unknown, but the legends surrounding them remain, fueling debates and haunting the memories of those who watched that unforgettable segment on that cold February night in 1976. I might have to go back and find that, to be fair. That's... There's a lot of local stuff. I might actually do that. Try and find a lot of local stuff. And find out what's been happening around the northeast and stuff. And maybe put some videos out. Let us know if you'd be interested. Does Alexa know something we don't? This next clip from TikTok user Rissy Rose 18 has been going viral for a very startling reason. Take a look. Alexa, what did the James Webb telescope detect that is heading towards Earth? From gitbook.io, the James Webb telescope had spotted an armada of alien ships heading toward Earth at near light speed. Alexa says that the James Webb Telescope has witnessed an armada of alien spacecraft heading straight for Earth. So does Alexa have her wires crossed or is shit about to hit the fan real quick? You've probably been reading her and it's climbed too much. The Honey Island Swamp Monster, also known as La Bête Noire, or the Cajun Sasquatch, is one of Louisiana's most intriguing folklore legends. Alleged to lurk within the dense, shadowed confines of the Honey Island Swamp in St. Tammany Parish, Louisiana, this creature is often compared to Bigfoot in both appearance and mystery. Despite the lack of scientific backing, tales of the Honey Island Swamp Monster draw thousands of curious onlookers to the area each year, with swamp tour companies weaving the monster's legend into their stories. Witnesses describe the creature as a towering, ape-like figure standing nearly seven feet tall and covered in grey, matted hair. The Honey Island Swamp Monster is said to have piercing yellow or red eyes and a foul odour, which locals claim lingers in the area it visits. Unusually, some footprint casts attributed to the monster show only four toes, unlike the five-toed prints of known primates. These prints, however, have been met with scepticism by experts, including ecologist Paul Wagner and his Cajun guide, Robbie Charbonnet, who argue that hard evidence of the creature is non-existent. The earliest documented encounter with the creature dates back to 1963, when Harlan Ford, a retired air traffic controller and avid wildlife photographer, claimed to have seen a large mysterious figure in the swamp. That's relatively recent, to be fair, the 60s. It, it sort of the scheme of things, do you think there'd have been a lot more documentation from earlier settlements and stuff? But I do like the way Slaptam goes into the detail. He does a lot of research. It's quite interesting stories. A, a lot of this stuff can be put down to being staged and stuff, but the, the depth of information he sort of What's out there is, is really impressive, to be fair. After Ford's death in 1980, a reel of Super 8 footage was found among his belongings, reportedly showing a large bipedal figure trudging through the dense swamp foliage. This is that footage.
While the grainy film doesn't provide conclusive evidence, it has fueled the monster's lore. It'd just be. In 1974, Ford and his friend Billy Mills reportedly found strange footprints in the area and discovered the body of a wild boar with what they described as gashes to its throat, lending credence to the stories of an apex predator stalking the swamp. Yet sightings remain scarce and hard evidence elusive. Some speculate that the legend could have a more mundane origin. Local lore tells of a circus train accident near the swamp in the early 1900s, which supposedly led to the escape of several chimpanzees. This story posits that these chimpanzees may have adapted to the swamp environment over generations, possibly interbreeding and evolving to form a new hybrid species, one that became the basis for the Honey Island Swamp Monster myth. To this day, the Honey Island Swamp Monster remains a part of Louisiana's folklore, inspiring everything from tour stops to cryptid enthusiasts scouring the swamp. But the mystery of the creature endures, with people continuing to ask, could Harlan Ford's 1963 Super 8 footage actually capture the elusive Honey Island Swamp Monster? Or is it just another haunting echo of the swamp's natural mystique? So let me know, have you heard of this cryptid before? And what do you make of the bizarre footage? I've heard of the honey monster. I know. <laughs> Pretty creepy stuff, that man. I would like to think there is stuff like that. That we haven't yet discovered as such. Be interesting to see what comes of it when we do actually catch up with these things. There is no what you guys think. Could just be a bloke in a suit. In April 2022, a photograph taken at Khao Wong Temple in Thailand sent waves through the local community and beyond, as it appeared to capture an inexplicable figure at an 18-year-old's funeral. The haunting image, reportedly taken by a friend of the deceased, revealed an elderly figure seated beside the young person's coffin. A presence that many found eerie. No, that is pretty creepy, like. Seems a bit low. As news of the photo spread, the deceased family claimed that the figure bore a striking resemblance to the young person's great-grandfather who had passed away decades ago. That would be a nice thought, to be fair. They're, they're still around looking after you. Relatives and friends of the family believe the spirit may have returned to offer support or protection during the farewell ceremony. True or not, this eerie image has cemented itself as a local legend, offering a glimpse into Thailand's enduring respect and fascination with the spirit world. Have you ever? There you go, guys. Some good stuff there again. Like I said, it's, I do find them interesting. More with like the history and the the stories that back these things up. To be fair, it does a lot of research into that sort of stuff and presents it well. So, very grateful for him for that. And yeah, if, like I said, if you wouldn't mind popping by their channel, dropping them a sub, be very grateful. Some intriguing stuff there. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. Like I said, it sort of sparked me thinking about doing some stuff on my local area and seeing where I can find it, to be honest. Oh, I have to have a think about the format for that, but it'll be interesting to do. And in the meantime, I should be back with more of these and more of me gameplay. Uh, play through with Batman, and there will be other games following that once I get going. But, um, please hit the thumbs up on the video, try and draw some views in, sub to the channel, and ring the bell, and you'll get alerts when all that stuff goes live. I'm very grateful, and I shall catch you in the next one. Cheers for watching, guys.